Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Listen. <clears throat> the Moses system of church is dead. <clears throat> it was supposed to die a couple thousand years ago when Jesus came. <clears throat> the problem is it's so convenient. What you do is you have the anointed man or woman of God, and they go hear God for you. And uh, just like the way that you outsource your lawn care, you can outsource your spiritual life. And then you go, you get fed, and then you show everybody the green grass you have by, you know, sharing their quote on your Instagram story. Like your neighbors come over and tell you your lawn looks great, even though you're paying somebody $150 a month to do that for you. Your lawn looks amazing. Thank you. Even though you had nothing to do with it other than write a check, right? Does this make sense to anybody? Turn me up a little bit, sound man, if you would. <clears throat> We do that with our uh, spiritual life, unfortunately. We just quote the anointed man or woman of God, and there's even no expectation that we would get our own revelation. <clears throat> we let him go on the mountain for us, we meet with God, and when he comes back down, we do the transaction. He gives us a revelation, we give him some whatever, and then we go on with our lives thinking that we're pleasing God and we're fulfilling the purpose of God in our life. only problem is that's not the way it was ever supposed to be, and Jesus came to put a death to it once and for all. The good news is that we don't need a Moses. It's better going on our own. <clears throat> this is pretty good news, honey. It's good news, Isaac. It's really good news. <clears throat> the problem is, Moses wasn't doing anything wrong other than letting people feed off of him. We're all supposed to be going on the mountain, and that takes a little bit of effort. How you doing, Kelly? You're looking mucho pregnant. <laughs> Travis has been praying for double portion his whole life. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Travis serves the God of more than enough. Who needs one baby, man? Come on. Let's just get this going right now. I've got, I got to make up time. Who knows if Kelly's going to do it again? He's like, got to do it right now. I love them. I can joke with them because they're family. <clears throat> huh. I only have a goal here of you seeing freedom and living in it. That's the goal today. That's really the goal today. And so um, if you want some bullet points and all that, we'll, we'll put some up here in a second. But uh, I would much rather you see Jesus. <clears throat> you serve in a church that believes that you're going to hear God, you're going to see the promised land, and he's going to invite you to live in it. Amen. Amen. I've never seen anybody go with the go team that God didn't use. I've never seen anybody sign up to be a burning one that God didn't start giving them prophetic revelation of what to pray. Never seen it happen. Never seen it happen. I've never seen anybody who humbled themselves before the hand of God that he did not fill and use. Never seen it happen. Amen. And yet, we allow people to construct the tyranny of the anointed man or woman of God who goes before you, who serves between the people and the altar. It's not true. It's not God's desire. It's not what Jesus died for. And we refuse to rob God of His glory. I refuse to wear His glory and let you think that you can't have the same. It's not going to happen. Leaders in this house won't do it. Now, we're all gifted differently, and there's nothing wrong with that. I bring what I have to the table, and first impressions brings what they have, and hospitality brings what they have to the table, and uh, it's all different parts of the same God. Amen? 
And we all feed from what each other brings. Sarah brought an amazing word a couple of weeks ago, and she talked about how the kingdom's like a potluck. And if you don't bring your bread to the table, all you get to eat is bread, right? Now, my daughter likes bread, so that doesn't sound like such a bad thing. But for me, for me, I need some meat. I need meat. My meat is to do the will of the Father. Not my asparagus is to do the will of the Father. Amen. Asparagus don't fill you like a sirloin. The Lord is here to fill you today. Amen. Too many people got a Brussels sprout filling. I need a prime rib with loaded baked potato filling. Amen. I need that feeling that you get like the meat sweats from. Amen? I don't want that feeling that I'll need another meal in 90 minutes. I need a a feeling that like an hour later, I'm like, ooh, I ate too much. That was not a good one. Two hours later, ooh, I didn't need that much, but man, I'm still full. I need that feeling like the next morning, you're like, I'm not sure I need breakfast. I am still full. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I did not need that last five ounces of steak. (laughs) I am full. That's the feeling I need from Jesus. Amen? Amen. I don't need a little jar of baby food filling. We got too many baby food fillings in the church today. Doesn't even need to be chewed. Just suck on it and eventually you swallow it and there it is. It's in your stomach. You don't even know that you ate. That's a prophetic word right there. We're on the same side as anybody who preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't don't get me wrong. But I want more than the introduction. I don't mind eating a little salad before I get some meat. I don't mind it. Now, I'm talking metaphorically, of course. I don't have anything against people who are eating plant-based diets. You know, I know love people who do that. I get it. I'm, I don't <clears throat> no, I don't get it, but I understand it. <laughs> Again, this is, don't, I'm not building theologies off of this. I will say <clears throat> that, like anything, there could be an unclean spirit behind any bad thing, Right? But if you want to eat plants, eat plants. I don't got anything against it. I don't 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 make me, but uh, I don't. I'm not mad if you want to. Corey and I had a meal together recently, and uh, there was some meat. And he's like, Corey's eating plant based. Just I say that because one of my one of the closest people in my life, and he's eating. You know, we're, we're friends, so it's not. I'm not building. A, I'm not building a theology off of this, all right? And he's like, Oh man, that wasn't a croquette. What was it? Empanada. He's like, that looks really good. I was like, bro, don't do it. It's not worth it. If you're going to eat meat, let's go get a strip. Let's go get, let's get a sirloin. Let's, let's, let's not, not beef, ground beef that was fried a couple hours ago. Let's get some good stuff. If you're going to get the cramps, let's, let's do it on something good. Let's make it worth it, bro. Let's make it worth it. Come on. Let's go to Chima and let's do it right. Let's do it. Let's do it. I want to leave the table of the Lord full, though. Amen? Amen. A lot of people in America and in the Western church are hungry all the time. And you might think that it's a pretty good enterprise to keep them hungry. So they come back to get another meal. I want y'all to be the meat truck. I want you to leave here with your own food truck where people know where they can come and get fed so you can show them where you got the meat. Amen. Amen. Come on. This is what we need. This is what, come on, if you don't clap, clap, come on. This is the call of God in your life if you're part of this house. We're not settling for someone else telling us where God is. I need to go see him my own self. Amen. Amen. And that takes a little bit of effort. It just takes some work. To live a life connected to God takes a little bit of work. <laughs> we have to, uh, I, you know, I graduated uh, with my master's. I appreciate everybody who cheered me on. Um, 
<clears throat> yeah, amen. Amen. My wife, of course, being my biggest uh, fan and supporter, uh, I'm looking forward to having a day off now. Um, um, <clears throat> I'm for education. Um, early Pentecostals, like, celebrated in their ignorance. Uh, I'm not scared of the Word of God. It actually supports what we do. Amen? <laughs> I'm all for it. Amen. Uh, I'm still going to tell people I'm just a guy with a GED because I have a GED, right? And so I like to tell people I have a GED. My wife gets offended when I say that. She's like, but you graduated from the University of Florida, but I do have a GED. And there was a time, amen. If you have a GED, I'm with you. We're brothers. I'm also here to tell you, if that's all you were, that doesn't mean that's where you have to stop. Where you started is not necessarily where you're going to finish unless you want to stay there the rest of your life. They say when you're born, you look like your mother and father, but when you die, you look like your decisions. And so I would challenge you today. At some point, we've got to stop blaming other people for where we're at. We've got to stop blaming other people for where we're at. And at some point, we've got to say, man, I need to own this a little bit. I need to own my lot in life a little bit. Maybe the sickness, I got something to do with getting well. Maybe this oppression, I'm going to have to start saying, shut up, devil, instead of finding myself as the victim. Maybe the Lord is giving me opportunity to forgive somebody so I could be free. Maybe I need to confess my sins to somebody so I could be healed. We have to own it. As far as it is within my power, I want to live free. Amen. 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 Shabbat. Hallelujah. Talked about deliverance last week. Anybody get touched last week? It was powerful. In the words of John Harwood, the Lord came and dropped the hammer on the room, right? <laughs> Folks like, I'm going to church today. I'm like, oh, I got wrecked. And they're like, look at that. Look at that. I got wrecked. I got wrecked. Did you get touched? The Lord set people free. He set people free. <clears throat> Hallelujah. If you're visiting today, welcome. I don't know what to say. This is, uh, this is how we do Christmas services. Amen. We welcome the one from the manger to come and minister. Amen? That's, that's just what we do. What we do. Hey, our album's out. Check it out anywhere you listen to music. Amen? <laughs> Track six is fire. All right, Matthew chapter 10. <clears throat> Anybody here a disciple of Jesus? Jesus has some words for his disciples. Jesus called his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Here's what I like about this scripture. Number one, I'm a disciple, so I like the fact that Jesus had me in mind. Amen? I don't know about you. When I read the Bible, I feel like he wrote it for me. I see myself all over the word. Like he called his disciples. I'm like, yes, Lord. What would you like? I'm going to give you authority. Amen. Over what? Sickness and disease. How many sicknesses? How many diseases? Nah, every kind of sickness. In every kind of disease. Hallelujah. I like that. I like that because Jesus is like the Holy Ghost specialist, and he brought his disciples into his practice. And so when someone comes to you and they're like, oh, I got this sickness, I need a specialist, you're like, well, I might be the specialist you need. What kind of sickness do you have? Well, which one do you have authority over? Oh, I have authority over all. Well, I don't know if Jesus heals this. Hmm, let me check the word. Is that one of every kind? Good news. I've been given authority over that. But does he heal this kind of diseases? Uh, let me check my specialist uh, recommendation here. Hmm, every kind I have authority over. So, yes, good news. The doctor is in. Hallelujah. 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 And so, some, ha, feeling good, Corey. Feeling good in here right now. We might get free today. 
We're talking about what happens when Jesus comes. And we're not talking about the idealized Jesus that we've made Jesus, that Jesus that we've made in our own image, that Jesus that we've made in our political image, that Jesus that we've made in our economic image, that Jesus that we've made in the image of our soulish desires. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus, right? The one born of a virgin, the one who never sinned, the one who was filled with the Spirit and the Spirit rested upon him. We're talking about the Jesus who fulfilled the scriptures, walking in miracles and proclaiming the kingdom of God, the one who never sinned and was murdered, thus having victory over death and sin when he was resurrected from the dead, went up into heaven where he sits at the right hand of the Father, having authority over heaven and earth, who is truth, that Jesus who will come again one day on the clouds, judging the living and the dead, that Jesus is the one who I serve, and that Jesus is the one and is the only one who actually answers prayers. That's actually the only one that you can serve. That's actually the only God who will deliver and heal from every sickness and every type of disease. See, now when that Jesus comes, things change. When that Jesus comes, things change. You see, we can make a God in our desired image and things don't necessarily change and we can get frustrated with the living God because he doesn't look like the God we created. And that can be a place of frustration, amen? That can be, I don't know if you've ever been in a place where you expected God to do something and he didn't do it and you got mad at the living God because he didn't behave like the God we created. (laughs) We played the flute for you, Lord. Why didn't you dance? We played the dirge. Why didn't you mourn? He's like, guess what? You don't pick the song I dance to. I do. And when I pick the music, you behave, not me. Here's the God who stands in truth and tells us what truth looks like. He's like, here's truth over here. And we're like, well, actually, God, I'd like it to be over here. And he's like, good luck with that. Why didn't you come through, God? Come on over here in the truth. Come on over here in the truth. Come on over. There's healing. There's salvation. There's deliverance over here in truth. Oh, no, no, but my news station says this is the truth. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Corey. You praying for me? Please do. Trying to keep it together here. Okay, no, let's, 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 let's break it down. <clears throat> nope. I'm not doing it, Raquel. Raquel says, whenever I put my hands on my knees, I'm about to drop a bomb. So <laughs> I'm not doing it today. James chapter 4, verse 7, if you're stuck somewhere and you don't know why you haven't been delivered yet, I, I have no desire to rebuke you today. Hear me. I want you to, I might be a little worked up because I'm excited, but I, this, is, this is all good news. I want you to live in happiness. I want you to live in freedom. I'm, this is not like I'm going to make you miserable to happiness. Like, no, I just, it's all good news, right? And so sometimes we're caught in patterns in our marriage and in our life and with our kids and our finances and our health and our thought life and we don't understand why we can't get free of it and we keep looking externally at what needs to change externally we try to get an external solution to an internal problem does that make sense and so here we see James uh, who knew Jesus pretty well uh, he says uh, submit therefore to God resist the devil and he'll flee from you (coughs) See, in the church in, 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 uh, in the west In the late 90s, there was a lot of teaching on deliverance. Anybody remember that? (coughs) Excuse me. In the late 90s, early 2000s, there was like everything with the devil. It was all demons. There was like these deliverance services and deliverance conferences, and people are puking up their guts, and, oh, now I'm going to live free, except they had to keep coming to them every year. I'm like, well, if you're not free every year, maybe this isn't working. I don't know. 
Uh, and there was a lot of books on him. There was a lot of people trying to take victory over the devil in your life for you. And they were wondering why it didn't work. Oh, I read this book about the battlefield. And I read this book about this. And I'm simple because Joyce Meyer can't get you free, right? Like, like you, we have to partner with Jesus to get us free. But there was this time where everything was a demon and everything was a devil and everything was as if we were blameless in this whole battle and it was all the devil. And then the church kind of swung in the op- opposite direction and <clears throat> all the teaching now is about he's a good God and he's a good father and he's a loving daddy and nothing bad will ever come to you because if he's a good God, why would there ever be any troubles and why would there be anything unclean and just got to just bank your way into freedom and that's good and I believe about the goodness of God the problem is the Bible says we're going to have some problems and we're going to have to learn how to overcome them and if we weren't to be called overcomers then what are we here for we're not just a a a, a bookmark in time we're actually here to establish the kingdom of God on earth and displace the works of the devil and take this area for Jesus Christ and displace the enemy that's actually our call and if we're just supposed to lay around and think about how good God is then what is the point no I believe it's somewhere in between I believe we are to meditate on the goodness of God and I believe we are to remember that he is not sending us sickness disease but there is sickness and disease overcome there actually are battles that we're supposed to win there actually is an enemy that we are to rebuke the word says submit to God therefore And the theology of today, unfortunately, doesn't talk a lot about submission. A couple of people abuse this word so much that the church got offended by it and scared of it and runs from it now because the enemy won. No, there is submission. There's submission in the body of Christ. There's submission to God. Submission means that there's somebody else calling the shots, and I may disagree with them from time to time. It's possible that you want to go to school somewhere, and God's like, yeah, that's a great plan, but no. It's possible that you want to work somewhere or you want to do something for God and all your friends are doing it and they're all running in that direction. It looks good and it looks amazing, but good doesn't mean it's God. And you're like, well, why can't I go do that? Because he says, because I said no. I said you can't. But why? I already answered that question when I said no. That's why it's called submission. I work for you. You don't work for me. I follow the created eternal God, not he is here to help me. Again, like we said last week, the Holy Spirit is the helper, not your assistant. See, if we submit to God, and we resist the devil, the devil flees. You can't rebuke a devil if you haven't submitted to God. He says in Matthew, I believe it's chapter 11, he says, listen, you can't cast out the devil by the power of the devil. The kingdom will be divided against itself and won't stand. And too often we're trying to rebuke the God that we, excuse me, the fruit of the God that we made in our own image without actually repenting of making that God in our image. Does that make sense? I hope this makes sense. I'm not trying to. I'm trying to help. <clears throat> this means at times we're going to have to repent to God. Hey, I'm sorry. I was trying to follow you, and I didn't realize I was following my own plan. Forgive me. Restore me. I want to walk in your ways. Tell me what's next, and I'll do it. And if we submit to God, then we can resist the devil with authority, and he has to flee. That's a good word. <clears throat> Here in Florida, we have the dreaded curse of mosquitoes, right? And if we see mosquitoes in our house, there's a pretty easy question we start asking, is there a window open? At night, you tell people at the front door, don't leave the front door open, bugs are going to come in, right? I don't know if you know this, this is not a problem all over the country. This is a problem in the South. Other people don't quite get this. They just leave doors open. We're like, we don't leave doors open because bugs and criminals come in. We just don't leave doors open here. I don't want either one of them. Close the door. 
But you got to be a special kind of stupid to keep killing mosquitoes and not close the door, right? Like you got to you gotta be a special kind of stupid. You're like, here I am in bed getting bit up by mosquitoes. But I like the window open. Well, you better like some mosquitoes. You can't complain about the mosquitoes if you're leaving the window open, right? The enemy has to come in somehow. And if you're constantly complaining about the troubles in your life, what you're telling people is, I'm leaving windows open. I'm leaving windows open. I don't want to feel drafty air in my house at night. Because in Florida, the air is humid. That's why we keep the windows closed and the air on. It lowers the humidity. So when you feel humid air, you're like, something don't feel right. I don't know what it is. Yeah, you got a window open. And the open window brings bugs and criminals, right? And we don't want either one of them. Right? That's why we don't let our kids open the door. So we got special locks on the front door so the little ones can't open them because it lets the good stuff out and the bad stuff in. Like small children. We don't want them going out. We want them staying in. When we leave the door and window open, the good stuff leaves like the blessings. The blessings run out the window. And the criminal comes in, stealing from us. And you can yell at them all day long, but if you, they know where the open windows are. Amen? Who want to shut some windows and doors? I don't know, Mike. This is not what I preached. This isn't even what I wrote. I hope you're getting something out of it. Amen. Here's what I want to focus on. When Jesus comes, the enemy flees. That's what we want to talk about. What happens when Jesus shows up? The real, living, resurrected Jesus. What happens when he shows up? What happens when he shows up? Man, he starts touching stuff, right? You know, you take a kid into a place with expensive stuff, and you just want to tell them, don't touch anything. Stop touching things. Anybody had to say that to their kid? Just stop touching things. <laughs> you can touch nothing. <laughs> we had a two-year-old one time, Sarah. His name was Isaac, right? We got invited over a family friend's uh, Christmas gathering. We have one of those family friends that, like, didn't have small kids anymore, and they thought it would be great to have my kids come over. And she became, like, an art collector, crystal art collector. So she got massive glass tables with massive crystal things on it, and my two-year-old son, who acts like a two-year-old boy, he's coming over, and he's like, it's a jungle gym to him. He's ready to start climbing this stuff. <laughs> and we're out on the porch. We'll just spend Christmas out here. This is a great Thanks for inviting us over. This is amazing. Such a good time. Why don't you come in? Because we can't afford anything in your living room. <laughs> that, that's what, we, 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 yeah, we, nah, we'll just be here on the porch. Thank you very much. You got any ham you can bring out here? Because I'm expecting to get full here, and now I'm just aggravated. I'm just angry at this point. So what are you going to do? You're going to run around and tell your kid the whole day, don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. You, know, you ever, ever had to do that, Sarah? That gets... Have you, you ever had to do that? Just don't touch the things. Have you ever been there? Don't touch the things. Which things? Any of them. Don't touch the things. That don't make any sense, right? Don't touch the things. Because when, when they come in, that's in their nature to touch the things. That's the enemy. He comes in, he touches the things, right? But when God comes in, he feels like he's God. He's going to touch the things. And we can't just set up doors and say, don't go in that room, God, but come on in this room because we're in all those rooms. And the doors we don't let Jesus, the enemy is touching. If we don't let Jesus come in and touch them, then the enemy is touching them. And we don't want the enemy touching the things. We only want God touching the things. Amen. And this is what Jesus does, though. He comes in and acts like God. Where am I at here? Oh, goodness gracious. Here's the promise of God. You ready? James 4, 8. Draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands you sinners, purify your hearts, you double-minded. <clears throat> it's really important to understand, this is in the New Testament. This is James writing to saved people. This isn't some old covenant thing. This isn't something where people don't understand salvation. This is James writing to believers. This is James writing to the church in Boca Raton. This is James talking to the church of 2019, 2020. We've so fallen in love with, oh, I'm a child of God. I'm, I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. 
No, you're afflicted. What you need is <laughs> cleanse your hands, you sinners. Like, it's like we just got to, you know, what do you want from me? I'm blind. Well, what is it you want? I actually want to see. Like, we have to come to Jesus. Like, man, I got issues. I can't stop smoking weed. I don't know what to do. Stop hanging out with people who smoke weed. I don't understand. I can't stop this sin in my life. Stop hanging out with people doing the sin. Can't stop gambling. Stop going to the track. It's not that complicated. There's nobody gambling here. It's not complicated. This is not complicated. Can't stop looking at porn. Throw away your phone. It's not complicated. It's not complicated. Get you a flip phone and be done with it. It's not complicated. But I want to be able to sin. Boom, there's your problem. It's not complicated. It's not complicated. Is this complicated? I don't think it is. Cleanse your hands, you sinner, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Again, I'm not rebuking anybody. We need to recognize, man, I got issues in my heart. I want the living God, but I also want the God I created. That's called being double-minded. I want everything I want and everything God wants. And he's like, that's two minds. We're double-minded. We have two desires. And, he's, and the solution for that is to cleanse our hands, us sinners, and to purify our hearts. You can't get counseled out of that. You, gotta get, you just got to get purified. There's no shortcuts here. There's no magic that we've stumbled upon in the last hundred years of Christianity. We need to be filled with God. And we need to resist the devil. It's a supernatural formula that gets us free. And if you've never heard of it, let me break it down for you. More God, less sin. There it is right there. That is the supernatural formula. Now, here's what it is. I want us to be not just get delivered, but stay delivered, right? And I got a three-step plan to help you in that. Are you ready? Put it up, please. We need to encounter God, stop sinning, and live with a clean heart. This is how we stay free. And this is a constant, constant process. We were born in sin, the Word says, and we have to learn to live with God. If you're wondering, why can't I get this victory? Why can't I? Because you have to learn it. It's not, if it were just easy, if we just could stumble into it, then Jesus wouldn't have had to die on a cross. We wouldn't have a couple thousand years of martyrs if it was just simple for everybody to get saved and walk in truth. We wouldn't have people dying of cancer. We wouldn't have the gospel being persecuted all over the world. We wouldn't have false religions popping up everywhere and religious wars and people dying for money. And we wouldn't have that if it were simple. You actually have to fight for the kingdom. You actually have to war against sin. We actually have to put in effort. We have to beat back the devil who wants to take our country back over. It's true. Lies are being propagated here. Listen, we need to constantly be encountering God. And I'll tell you, this is where the greatest war is happening right here. Can you encounter God and how do you encounter him? We know that Jesus Christ said that it's better for him to go because he would leave us the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost would fill us with power. That we would have an experience after salvation called the filling of the Holy Ghost. And he would not only fill us, but he would come upon us. And we would do greater works in him. But this filling of the Holy Ghost, the primary purpose of it is to have intimacy with God. So that the very living God who created everything lives on the inside of us. And we have sweet fellowship and sweet communion. And he's one breath away. And when we don't understand with our natural mind, when our soul is in bondage and confusion and we don't know the words to pray, he's given us a prayer language that we can begin to pray the will of the Father and allow him to make intercession through us. I don't know what to do. Oh, Lord Jesus, I'm feeling overcome with temptation. I know you're just a breath away, even though you feel like you're on the other side of the world. I know right now you're on the inside of me, coming out like a river of living water. 
Shambo kante terebe ke taraba. There's a war over that right now. And I tell you what, we're not losing that war because the arc of history is for the filling of the Holy Ghost. Hundreds of millions of believers have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost on the earth. And it's only increasing in our generation. Amen. There's a war against this truth right here. Why? Because once you encounter God and you believe that we can encounter God, then all of a sudden the enemy gets a little bit weaker. All of a sudden we don't have a big devil and a little God anymore. All of a sudden, there's a real living God on the inside of us who's empowering me for overcoming. And so through this encounter, through this knowing and loving, I mean, you're asking me, hey, pastor, how do I get my, how do I get my marriage back on track? How do I strengthen my marriage? We're going to give the same advice. Start dating again. Start dating your spouse again. Start winning them over. Start going on dates. Start getting intimate. Spend times of intimacy. Grow in intimacy, right? That's, 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 that's what we say. How do, I don't know what to do with God. What do, I, what do I do? And people say, well, discipline. I'm like, well, you can't discipline your way to a better marriage. Now, you discipline yourself from doing things that are destroying your marriage. Hear me. You can discipline yourself not to do things that destroy your marriage. We can't discipline your way into a better marriage. That's only through intimacy. That's through intimacy. And so, yes, discipline yourself to stop doing things that are destroying your relationship with God, but you need intimacy to live closer to God. And the more intimate you are, the easier it is to say no. I don't cheat on my wife because I love my wife, not because I have this mastery of discipline. I don't have to go home and say, well, honey, good thing I had that plan in place. Otherwise, who knows how many, who knows how today would have gone, but good thing I got control. How's that going to do to our marriage? I saw three women on the way home that I might have, but I'm disciplined, honey. <laughs> Any woman want to hear that when your husband comes home? <laughs> Fellas, let me help you out. They don't want to hear that. <laughs> and if you feel the need to say that, call a fella. <laughs> Amen. And all the fellas said, That was pretty weak. Let me help you out one more time. Fellas, if you're dealing with temptation, tell a guy. Tell him soon. Don't tell your wife. Don't hide things from your wife if you're in sin. Don't, I'm not saying hide things from your wife. But don't tell your wife, hey, just want to let you know, I find other women attractive too, but I'm getting victory over it. Don't do that. That's not helpful. Let me say it another way. You do not want your wife to come home and say, Wow, sometimes I wish that guy was my husband instead of you. But ha, <laughs> I got the victory, honey. <laughs> like, just keep that to yourself. Like, let's just take that to the grave, if you don't mind. I don't. I don't know if you know this, but Betty's husband got a new car. His business is really flourishing in his ministry. Wow. I wonder what would happen if I would have married him instead of you. But don't worry, I'm getting the victory, honey. <laughs> Not what you want to hear. Amen. Fellas, if you want to, just tell your wife now. Listen, every time your heart wanders, let me know about it because I just want to know who I beat. Just say that, but I don't, I, don't, I don't advise it. Is this making sense, Corey? I'm not hearing anything from anybody, but I feel like this makes sense. I got to say this to people. Because otherwise, they come up to us. They come up to Corey and I say, hey, you've got to learn these lessons. They say, I just want to let you know I was really offended with you, but uh, I've gotten over it now. I'm like, don't do that either, right? Just... I used to really not like you, but don't worry, I got victory now. I'm like, I thought we were friends. <laughs> get in leadership. You'll get that. <laughs> it's a little blessing that God saves for leaders. <laughs> Encounter God. Stop sinning. Live with a clean heart. Living with a clean heart means you've got to own, the own your issues in your heart. You actually have to walk in forgiveness. Um, you're not allowed to walk in bitterness. Um, you're not allowed to walk in judgment because that's polluting you and not them. I have a whole bunch of other stuff I wanted to talk about, but I don't think you're going to get it. Let me just say this. <clears throat> I wanted to talk about physical healing today, um, but y'all distracted me with the talk of meat. <laughs> I feel like I need to go to a Brazilian steakhouse this week now. Yeah. 
Okay, how do we live in the presence of God now that I've gone over and I'm almost done? I say that in faith. How do we live in the presence of God? Listen, you need to pray in tongues. He gave it to you for a reason, not just for when you get excited in a, in a service when Corey starts singing or Lillian starts singing in the Holy Ghost. We need to pray in tongues. We need to be building up our relationship with the presence of God. When you pray in tongues, it keeps you in the presence of Jesus. You pray in tongues more, you're going to start experiencing Jesus more. And when Jesus comes, he heals, he delivers, and he saves. Who's going to play music for me? Any ideas for me? Is that Killian? Come on up, Killian. Play some music for me here. All three of y'all. Oh, Mike is here. She could do a three-part harmony. Two ultrasounds and Kelly. Really quickly before I end here, I need to come against one more lie before we pray for you. <clears throat> There's this lie called redemptive illness and suffering. And redemptive illness and suffering means um, that God has sent some sort of sickness to teach you something uh, or to intercede for your family or to make you more uh, compassionate or humble or God somehow there's some greater purpose in the devil's work in your life. And God can use everything for good, but it doesn't mean he sent it. Amen. You're not going to find a place in the New Testament where Jesus gives sickness away. He didn't have any sickness to give. You hear me? So if you've somehow been tormented by the idea that he has you going through some hard time, that he sent this hard time, he's using it. But if you're going through it, get out of it. Don't, don't, don't like, see, here's the lie says like, you know, I've gotten this cancer for, or my mom got cancer to, to, to teach it. No, no, no. That's, that's, that's the enemy wants you to agree with it, that it's God's will, and it's not God's will. I don't know why everybody doesn't get healed, but that doesn't change my mind that God wants everybody healed. In the New Testament, there's the word sozo. We've talked about this before. And sozo is a Greek word. It means deliverance, healing, and salvation. And this isn't something that was mentioned once or twice in passing to a very specific church, like how women were limited once or twice in one little church. It's it's not a tertiary thing that has to be dug out to understand it's not true. This is 150 times in the New Testament the word sozo is used. Now, if you see something once or twice, then you've got to figure out what the purpose of it is. But what if 150 times it makes it pretty plain? It's part of God's will. Amen. It's God's will that you be saved, healed, and delivered. Now, the way, like, the way that we have absolute faith that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We believe that, right? We absolutely believe that, right? 150, 200 years ago, the church didn't have that same faith. There were revivalists who plowed the ground, invented altar calls, studied the scriptures to get the church to the place where it is today that it absolutely believed that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That was not always a universal truth that we believe. The same way he's restoring faith and healing and deliverance. Amen. And so right now, you got to go to a little church in a strip in, in East Boca to see altar calls and miracles and healing, but one day it's going to be just as common as we see salvation. One day, should the Lord tarry that all the churches that are persecuting the Pentecostals right now, they're going to be doing the same thing. They're going to say, oh, and if you have cancer today, if you'll just check on this little box on this card that you want to be healed today, you will be healed. I mean, it's going to be like that one day. Thank God for the Pentecostals who went before us that all the church today believes that you can just check a little box on a card and get saved because that's the Pentecostals who went ahead and plowed that ground. And guess what? We'll just continue plowing ground for the church today in the name of Jesus. We'll just go ahead and we'll plow that ground for you and one day 150 years from now should the lord tarry the main church out there they're just going to agree with it just like us and we'll just sit in heaven and say thank you jesus that you're getting what you died on the cross for we don't care who gets the credit we just we want jesus to get what he bought with his suffering amen but we're not going to stop believing it just because other people haven't caught revelation yet amen
Let me skip ahead. Luke chapter 5, verse 17. Back there, if you skip ahead, you'll find that. See, what we believe about healing is important because it's what we believe about God. Look at this. One day, Jesus was teaching, and there were some Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. Watch this. And the power of the Lord was present for Jesus to perform healing. See, it was the Holy Ghost of God that was upon Christ that empowered him to heal. It was the anointing that he received at that baptism when the Father spoke over him and the Spirit descended upon him like a dove. And I'm here to tell you today that the Holy Ghost is here to heal. Amen. Stand with me if you would. Last week we had a powerful, powerful, powerful time of deliverance. And I always wanted to talk about healing today, but the Lord said, no, 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 no. This lie of affliction is too deep for you to do a one and done. We need them to know that the devil is at work and they have power over the enemy. And today, in the name of Jesus, I believe there's people going to be healed, set free, delivered. And if you're away from God today, saved. Pray with me if you would. Father, in the name of Jesus, we welcome you, Lord. We repent of every belief of every value that we've held on to that denies that you are Lord of all, that you're Lord over sickness and you're Lord over our lives. Wow, I feel the Holy Ghost of God in here. Ha! And today, Lord, we account ourselves among those in Matthew 10.1 that you summoned and you gave authority over unclean spirits to heal every kind of disease in every kind of sickness. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we command every spirit of infirmity to flee from this house in the name of Jesus. Wow, the Lord is anointing some people right now for healing. Right now, I feel it. I feel it so strongly in the name of Jesus, Mikey. I feel it so strongly right now. The Lord is right now anointing people for the healing ministry. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. He's visiting right now. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <clears throat> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The Lord is healing right now. I, there's someone who's had migraines. There's headaches. Headaches right now. In the, I commanded the name. This afflicting spirit to leave your life. Right now. Someone has had an issue in your neck. Something in your spinal cord. I don't know if it was some sort of fluid or stiffness, but right now you could feel it running down your back. The Lord is pouring His oil upon you and it's running down and you're being delivered right now of that sickness. In the name of Jesus. He's healing all kinds of back issues right now and someone, it's not quite a lower back, but it's right in the center of your back and the Lord right now. He's washing clean someone who dabbled in, uh, in the occult. In uh, I don't know if it was tarot card reading or horoscopes. I just see some occult. Repent right now. He's setting free right now. He's setting free right now from voodoo. Brujaria is broken by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I don't know if it was your aunt. I don't know who it was who, who spoke a curse over you that you thought was a blessing, but I break it right now. I mean, just repent of it right now. Just break it. We break it right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's going to fly back like a boomerang of blessing on her in the name of Jesus. And she will encounter the living God, the one she's actually seeking. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Powerful praying tongues. In the name of Jesus. Ministry team, come forward if you would. In the name of Jesus. Corey, do me a favor. Stand right here. In the name of Jesus. Mike Rendler, can you, can you just stand on the stage right over here? I want you to stand right there, Mike. 
Back a little bit. Right there. Shaka. Come over here, right here, Courtney. Right here. Yeah. Mm. In the name of Jesus, we just take authority over the foul demons afflicting your life right now. <clears throat> you foul, wicked spirit of infirmity. Out in the name of Jesus. demonic spirit of poverty. Rebuke it, Corey. You demon of poverty. You spirit of injustice. The Lord Jesus Christ rebukes you. Receive your deliverance right now. Receive your deliverance right now. Receive your deliverance right now. Now listen, we're going to pray for the sick here in one second, but I feel like I'm supposed to pray for some people to receive the ministry of healing. And you may already have the gift. I don't know, but I, I'm going to pray. Um, I'm just trying to follow the Holy Ghost here. And um, you may already have it. You may want it and not have it yet, but this is not for your desire. The Lord is going to anoint a couple people right now. It might be one, might be three. I'm not sure exactly. But I'm going to pray, and somebody's right hand is going to start burning. And when it does, I need you to come forward. Don't, don't, don't drum this up. Don't do me a favor. Is this for me? Thank you. Don't drum this up, right? I want you to follow the Lord right now. Just because you want a gift doesn't mean God wants to give it to you right now. And he may have already given it to you. Don't deny that he's given it to you by coming up and saying you want it. You already have it. Does that make sense? So we're going to pray. And if your right hand starts burning, I want you to come. Oh, here we go right now. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit. Mm. Pray in the Holy Ghost. That might be you. Huh? Whoa. And then, mm. But listen, I don't want anybody coming forward yet because if you get this gift, you have to pray for sick wherever you go. It's going to be part of the call of God on your life. You have to. You won't have a choice. He will be expecting you to want to give it away. People may start calling you when they find out. And you may want to spend time with your family, but you don't have that option any longer because you gave your hand to Jesus. I see him putting someone's hand in the fire right now. Now, if your life is bound in sin, you know, repent. No, you, don't, you don't want this right now. But the fire of God is falling on people right now in the name. Mm, there it is right there. It was on your hand now. It's just washing down your back. I feel it right now. If that's you, I want you to come forward. I will lay hands on you. But I want you to recognize that you're giving your hand to God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Turn it up, Lord. More fire. Come on. More fire. There it is right there. More fire. Pray in tongues with me. More fire. Pray in tongues with me. More fire right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. More, Lord. More, Lord. Don't resist the Lord. Come forward if that's you. Your right hand is beginning to burn and your back is beginning to burn. You feel the fire on your shoulders and on your back. That's it. Come on. Who else? Shamba kante de kete de 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 de. Come on forward. Shamba tamba kante de kete. Lamba, bomba, remba. On de 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 de. Line up. Come on. Shamba. Anybody else? Come on. I'm going to wait because there's one more. This is not an altar call for salvation. I just want to obey Jesus. We're going to pray for everybody who wants healing in a minute. Listen, if you need healing in your body, we want to pray for you now. If you want to come forward, let me... Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I will... Just give me one minute, if you would, please. Just forgive me. One minute. Do you have the microphone? Pray in tongues, Travis. Prophesy over a gift right now. This gift of healing. Prophesy over it right now. I want it to be God. Yeah. Oh. I just see creative miracles being a part of your inheritance. Very, very normal. The babies that aren't alive are going to come alive. Again. Wow. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Pray into it, people. Come on. And pregnancies, if it was there, impossible, are going to happen. It's 
can become very normal. It's your hand, Lord. Yeah. It's your hand, Jesus. And people who have given up hope on being healed, tried everything else, they'll come to you, they'll put you in front of them, and they'll recover immediately. Come on, praying sons. I don't know if you know this. Mary Lou works in a, I called it Mary Lou. <laughs> oh, I'm in the anointing. I know. I, I got half her name. That was pretty good for me in the anointing. Mary Jane works in a hospital. She sees healings all over. People call her from other floors to come pray for patients. But she wasn't always like that. She's paid the price of ridicule to walk in that. And so we say today, this hand is yours, Lord. This hand is yours, Lord. This hand is yours, Lord. You ready? Ready? Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Take it. Fire of God right there. Fire of God. You come down and lay hands on me, Josh. Amen. If you need healing, I want you to come forward now. Corey, go ahead and bless the people. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a shout this morning? Just, just thank one. him for what he's doing. Check one. Check one. Hallelujah. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. What God is doing in our house and in our lives, in your life, is a big deal. It's a big deal. And uh, I just, um, I'm getting so excited about God, what God wants to do in our city. I'm getting so excited about what God wants to do in our city. And uh, I know, I know that I know that I know that, that people don't need just another religious event. They need to be connected to the presence and power of Jesus. They need something real. They need some, the, the world is hungry for real. They're hungry for authentic. They're hungry for what's genuine. So this, this coming Sunday is our Christmas service. I want people to experience the real Jesus this Christmas. Amen. So as you go out, grab some invitation cards. Let's, let's fill this room Christmas. It's easy to get people here. Let's invite them. Let's invite them to church because I believe that when Jesus comes, he saves, he heals, he delivers. He does the impossible. Amen. Can we, can we do that, church? Are we going to invite people this, this year? Come on, let's, let's fill this room because Boca Raton, our friends and family, need the presence of Jesus. They need the presence of Jesus. Look, I got saved in a Presbyterian church, and it was awesome. It was, it was awesome. They preached the gospel, and it was awesome. But, but God had so much more for me than, than just reciting a prayer, just reciting a prayer when I was a young boy. And he has so much more. He has so much more. Amen? I want the more. How about you? Come on, I want the more. How about you? I'm not knocking what anybody else does. I'm just saying, this is who we are supposed to be. This is who we are called to be. Let's be that. Amen. Let's give it up for Jesus one more time. God bless you guys. Have an amazing Sunday. We'll see you next week for our Christmas service.